Hello, my name is Rebecca Keenan. I'm going to tell you about the Beaverworks Summer Institute Build a CubeSat course. This program is a collaboration between MIT Lincoln Laboratory, MIT Campus, and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. The Beaverworks Summer Institute, also known as BWSI, is a four-week full-time STEM program for talented high school students. Prospective students complete a rigorous application process that includes an online independent course. There are no costs to students to apply or attend. Each year, a diverse cohort of top students from around the country are accepted into the summer program, where they complete one of several project-based courses and attend daily seminars from experts in a variety of fields. I'm the lead instructor for the Build a CubeSat course, which is one of these courses offered by BWSI. We partner with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution to tackle a different scientific mission using satellite imagery each year. The students work in teams to design, prototype, and demonstrate their own CubeSat. Subject matter experts from MIT campus and Lincoln Laboratory teach lectures on satellite systems, and our undergraduate and graduate student TAs guide students through laboratory exercises and projects. Participants are exposed to a wide range of engineering disciplines. Many high school students have some experience with programming and they mostly understand that aerospace engineering relates to satellites, but they often don't have a good understanding of what electrical and mechanical engineering entails or how critical it is to satellite development. For their final project, students get to specialize in their area of interest which might be programming, but it could also be power systems or mechanical design and CAD modeling. And they work with their peers in an interdisciplinary team that mimics the type of engineering teams they might see in industry. Although of course students learn about satellite design and a lot about how they could build their own CubeSat, we mostly focus on using CubeSats as a motivation for learning some fundamental skills that will hopefully be helpful to them in any field they decide to go into. We cover fundamental engineering skills including circuitry, mechanical design, CAD modeling, uh, how to design flight software, user interfaces, uh, and of course topics like attitude determination and other aerospace topics. All of our projects are team-based, so how to work effectively in a team, how to have peer leadership and project management are a big part of this course. Uh, and I believe those skills are valuable for engineers as well as for really anyone who, who wants to be successful in their career. Uh, technical communication is also heavily emphasized throughout the course. Students learn to coordinate with each other to ensure that all of their tasks are covered and each component can interface with the rest of the system. We also have more formal technical communication in the form of documentation and presentations each Friday that cover the work that was completed that week. Presentations are an opportunity to practice public speaking, and they allow the students to get valuable feedback from their instructors and their peers. We also have communications between the students and their customer, which in this case is our scientists from Woods Hole. So they get that experience of taking maybe something vague that a scientist says they want and convert that into mission requirements that they can actually implement into their system. Before I delve more into the details of the course, I want to tell you a little bit more about its history. BWSI was started as an in-person program on MIT's campus. The Build a CubeSat course was first run in 2018 with an emphasis on completing the preliminary design for the BeaverCube Ocean Imaging CubeSat. BeaverCube has since been incorporated into an MIT capstone course and secured a launch through NASA's CubeSat launch initiative. I took over the CubeSat course in 2019. My primary focus has been to increase the hands-on prototyping aspects of the course 
that allow students to learn by doing. In 2020, we made the decision to convert to a virtual format so that we could continue to provide opportunities for students in this pandemic environment. The CubeSat course is fundamentally a hardware course, so we sent kits to each of the students at no cost to them. The students were still able to work in teams using Zoom breakout rooms, and each student built their own CubeSat prototype in their home. The hardware kit for the course includes hobbyist grade components that represent the subsystems you would have in a real satellite. We use a Raspberry Pi as a flight computer, and of all of the students program in Python, because they take a course on that as part of their application materials. For the virtual course, we also use the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth for wireless communications instead of XB radios, which we use in person. The Raspberry Pi camera allows us to get creative with different visual light imaging missions each year, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. We use an IMU for attitude determination the students mostly rely on the magnetometer, but they also have an accelerometer and gyroscope. And we have a battery and solar panel for the power system. The one new structure consists of laser cut acrylic panels and aluminum corner rails. Although it doesn't meet all of the CubeSat standard, standards, it is dimensionally accurate and gives the students flexibility for determining how they want to mount all of their components. For both 2019 and 2020, the outline for the CubeSat course has remained roughly the same. Week one introduced the students to systems engineering and their ocean science mission from Woods Hole. Many of the students are nervous about working with hardware, so we try to get them feeling confident and successful as quickly as possible. Our first project, the FlatSat Challenge, starts day one. The students are given instructions for assembling their Raspberry Pi, IMU, and camera onto one of their acrylic panels. To get familiar with these components, they learn to trigger taking a picture by shaking their flats app. To end the week, each team delves into one component, learning all of the mechanical, electrical, and software interfaces, and then presents those results and teaches the rest of the class how to use their component. Week two then uses those components to go more in depth on each of the subsystems that we focus on for the final project. Each day has a variety of lectures and lab activities to teach concepts like power budgets, image processing, and wireless communications, to name a few. At the end of week two, students are placed in their final project teams, which is their ocean science mission, and present a concept of operations for their own CubeSat. Week three starts the final project in earnest. Students are given large chunks of time to work on their design aspects that they learned about in week two. TAs and instructors rotate between the teams to help guide them, but the students are encouraged to find their own solutions and make their own mistakes. We also find time to include additional lectures on topics that may not have a direct connection to our final project, but are still critical aspects of satellite design. Week four is always stressful for the students as they work towards demonstrating and presenting their project. We set up a scenario for the students that allows them to test their CubeSat prototype through a mock imaging mission. The CubeSats have to operate off of battery power, take images at the right time to capture the scenes of interest, and send the images to their ground station wirelessly, and process the images to gain insight into the environment that they were imaging. BWSI ends with a final event. <clears throat> Students present their project to their friends and family. Their presentations not only include their design, but also an analysis of how their systems performed in the demo and what they would do to convert their prototype into a flight system. In 2019, the science mission looked at detecting oil spills and determining if the oil was oxidized or not. For the in-person course, we set up three zip lines that the CubeSats orbited around, which you can see in this video here. The students had to image these five pans that you can see in the video, which each had water and different amounts of oxidized and non-oxidized oil. The teams also had more flexibility with the size and construction of their CubeSat. 
Uh, one team even came up with a mechanism to release solar panel wings when they took out their move before flight pin, uh, which you can see in this video. In 2020, we couldn't meet in person, so we used the technology we already had in our hardware kits to get to know each other a little bit better. In the FlatSat challenge, students trigger taking a picture by shaking their IMU. So we use that to take selfies, um, and each of the students took a selfie as part of that project, which our TAs put together into a, a, the collage that you see on the left. For our final project, each of the students worked in teams, but had to put together their own implementation of their CubeSat system. And you can see one of the teams on the bottom right, all holding up their CubeSats. For the actual demo of our ocean science mission, we looked at detecting colored plastic in the ocean. Each student received colored plastic acrylic in their kit so they would have something real to image in their homes. The students and the teams took turns walking their CubeSat in circles over three scenes while their teammates had to report the amount of each color and size of plastic based on the images they received back from the CubeSat. You can see one of the students practicing her demo in the image on the upper right. There are some things that we can really only do in person, like allowing the students to customize their structure by machining parts for them uh, in real time. And there's definitely a greater sense of community when we're sharing a physical space. But I've also seen some positives to the virtual course. We were able to take more students. We had 25 students in 2020 versus 16 students in 2019. And we had a greater diversity of students from different locations around the country, uh, rather than a majority of students from the Boston area. Each student was also forced to build their entire prototype themselves instead of building a component and then integrating it in with their team. And there's pros and cons to that as well, but I do think for some students, being forced to do the whole thing themselves instead of relying on teammates uh, was a benefit to them. In both cases, the CubeSat course was very successful for the virtual format and in person. BWSI will be fully virtual again this year. Our science mission is going to be to estimate the emperor penguin population in Antarctica. We are excited to build off of the lessons learned from 2020 to improve the virtual learning experience. One of the new aspects we're adding this year is a turntable orbiter design shown on the left on the slide. We hope this will give more consistency for the students demonstrating their prototypes in their homes as everyone will have the same height above their images and be rotating at the same radius. Another new component we added this year is an outreach program for younger high school students. Each program runs for eight weeks and meets three hours each Saturday. In the fall, we started this program for the CubeSat class that focused on getting more girls into STEM. This spring, we've run that class again, but we're focusing on inner city kids and underrepresented populations. Many of the BWSI programs have started these outreach programs and we hope that this will add more opportunities for high school students to get an introduction to STEM and bring in more diverse student populations to our summer program. If you would like to learn more about BeaverWorks or if you have a high school student who would like to apply to a future BWSI program, please follow the link on the slide or contact bwsi-admin at mit.edu with any questions. Thank you.